So next, 26, uh, 28, 16. So what do we have here? Three resistors connected like this. So we have R1, 10 ohms, R2, 15, okay, units. I didn't have enough space, so I skipped units, 15 ohms. And we don't know information about the last resistor R3. That's our goal. We need to find the resistance R3. But it's not the whole uh, information given. Uh, so then we also know that potential difference across the whole structure, structure of three resistors, potential difference across three resistors is 5 volts. Then we also know that current flowing through this part of the circuit is 100 milliamps, 0.1 amps basically, right? So we need to find R3. So what can be done? Uh, again, some of you probably can start solving this problem immediately. Probably some of you will struggle, right? But let me first, like I've done already several times, let me just write down everything that we can about this problem. Okay, everything that we can uh, from the point of physics, because again, you can describe it as being I don't know, ugly, beautiful, or you can describe it in any possible way. But let's uh, write down everything possible uh, from the point of view of physics, right? And since our circuit, okay, part of the circuit consists of resistor, right? Uh, so we need to analyze three parameters again all the time that circuit trinity right r i delta v in this case right so let me write down everything that we can about those three quantities right um so let me write over here underneath so which we wrote it three okay three parameters okay great and then we should be able to uh, tell uh, all possible methods which can be used to solve this problem. So R, I, and delta V. All right, so let's start with, I think I started with current. Yeah, yeah, let's start with current. So what can we say about currents of these uh, three resistors? It's obvious, right? Since we don't have any junction points, current must be exactly the same. It doesn't matter where you measure in this resistor, that resistor, or that resistor, or somewhere else. Current must be the same. So we can write I1 equals to I2 equals to I3 and equals to a given current. Right? So we can write so I1 equals to I2 equals to I3 equals to our given current I, and that is the 100 milliamps. Actually, in my notes, I didn't write 100 milliamps, but why not? Then, uh, what else? Uh, let's look at delta V. So, delta V, what can we say about delta V? Again, most, for most of students, it's obvious, right? So uh, this total voltage drop or potential um, uh, potential drop, right? Uh, potential difference must be equal to potential difference across the first one plus potential difference across the second plus potential difference across the third resistor in this circuit, right? So we can write at this. So delta V equals to delta V1. Delta V without subscript, it's at this plus delta v uh, 2 plus delta v uh, 3. Great, so we're getting some expression. Then resistance. So how can we use resistance to find uh, that unknown resistor, the value of that unknown resistor? Uh, we just introduced the equivalent resistance, so let's try to use our equivalent. That's the only thing I, that's the only thing, uh, I can think of. All right, so let's use, okay, in this case, uh, resistors are connected in uh, series, right? So we can use our equivalent uh, in that case, uh, for this situation. R equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that's it. So that's what we can write about these three parameters. But again, also, we need to use what all the time? Like the same we used uh, for 
uh, capacitors. Now we need to use the formula uh, which connects all these three parameters, Ohm's law. When we analyze the capacitors, we use definition of capacitance. Right? So here Ohm's law, basically definition of resistance. So which way, in which form I wrote it? Okay, let me write Ohm's. Wait, 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 oops. Apostrophe in the wrong place. All right, so, uh, okay, let me write like this. Delta V equals R times I, right? So now that's it. That's pretty much the whole story. And now let's think uh, which method can be extracted from here. Uh, first of all, you know what? This 100 milliamps, it's on my way. I, I need more space a little bit. Right, let me erase it. It's correct, right, what was written, but I need more space. So, you remember, in order to solve for unknown R, first of all, we need to use an expression. How many expressions we have? We have this expression for delta V and expression for R. As a result, we have two methods. The first method will be used, will use uh, this expression. The second method will, will use uh, that formula, right? And of course, every time we will have to use this important piece of physics about information about current. And of course, a uh, formula which connect all these three quantities, right? So two methods we can easily identify. So first method will be based on this, with using that and this. So this will be method number one. And method number two will be, okay, based on uh, this. This expression, again, this important piece of physics and the formula which connects all these uh, parameters. So, two methods. Something similar, you remember, I drew uh, when we analyzed capacitors. So, let's solve using both of these method methods. So, method number one, okay, let me use still red, and uh, again, it's based on the uh, potential differences, so let me write this delta V, rewrite equals to delta V1 plus delta V2 uh, and plus delta V3. Uh, okay, so eventually the final goal is to find R, so it means that we need to insert into this expression uh, somehow information about resistors, resistances, right? Uh, and of course that can be done using Ohm's law, right? And actually it's written in the correct form. So delta V equals Ri. So uh, this will be, um, ah, yeah, this is given, this is given, right? Delta V five volts. And so we need to write delta V one, delta V two, and delta V three in terms of Ri's. Okay, so let me do it. Um, I'm thinking, I think I will need that space for method two, so let me write underneath. All right, so delta V equals to R1 times I. Of course, strictly speaking, I should put I1, but I will use immediately this piece of information that all currents are the same. So I will drop subscripts immediately, right? And just to save space a little bit, right? But you see, at this point, I use that fact. I use immediately uh, Ohm's law and the fact that all currents are the same. So, uh, then plus R2 times I and plus R3 times I. Okay, and now uh, we applied pretty much everything which was planning to apply right in the first method. And look, how many unknowns do we have in this formula, in this expression? Delta V given 5 volts, R1 10 current given, uh, R2 is given, current is given, R3 unknown, current is given. We have only one unknown, which is our uh, resistance R3. So it means that, yeah, one equation, one unknown, of course, it can be solved for uh, R3. So let me do it in this way. I can factor out I and move it to the left-hand side. So delta V divided by i equals to r1 plus r2 plus r3 and then of course we can solve it for r3 it will be uh, delta v divided by i minus r1 minus r2
Yeah. First, I factor out i because it's everywhere. Move it to the left hand side to the, to the denominator. And then r1 and r2 moved again to the left hand side. And I flip the equation. So, uh, delta V, okay, I'm not going to plug numbers, I will just say delta V 5 volts divided by 0.1 amps, 5 divided by 0.1, it's 50, 50 ohms. So, this will be 50 ohms minus 10 ohms minus 15 ohms, so it's a minus 25, 50 minus 25, that's 25 ohms. So the answer is 25 ohms, right? So that's the value of the unknown resistor, right? So that's the first, me first method. Now let's, uh, let's uh, use the second one. So now it is based on uh, expression for the equivalent resistance. So how can we use that? Okay, let me, first of all, rewrite that. Uh, foundation of the second method, all right, plus R3. And now let's look at this uh, expression carefully. How many unknowns do we have here? R equivalent, we have no information about R equivalent, and uh, this is given, given, and R3. So we have two unknowns, right? So which is not a very encouraging beginning, right? All right. Uh, then, what is our global goal, right, in this problem? We need to find R3. That's our final destination, right? So in order to find R3, we need to find R equivalent somehow. Up to this point, every time uh, we used uh, this formula to find R equivalent, but now this formula doesn't give us the value of R equivalent because R3 is unknown. It means that we need to find R equivalent somehow else without using this formula. So, what can be used to find R equivalent? Some students see that, but most, most of students uh, don't see it immediately. In order to uh, make it clear how can we find R equivalent, although we use this method already when we analyze capacitors, lots of similarities. Let me draw an equivalent circuit. Let me first even uh, complete uh, this circuit, because yeah, that's what is given, but, uh, but, but I can easily turn on my imagination, right, and I can say, you know what, I can easily attach over here, for example, uh, with a dash line, uh, some battery, right. Of course, it's not given, but yeah, there must be somewhere a uh, battery which provides this potential difference delta V and provides that current I, right? Yeah, I can do it. It's not a crime as, as long as it helps me to analyze the situation, right? So, but now I can uh, easily draw uh, an equivalent circuit with, with, with this my imaginary battery, okay? Let me draw an equivalent circuit. <coughs> so it will be, this will be my R equivalent and this will be that my imaginary battery, so it's uh, R equivalent. And you remember whenever you introduce an equivalent circuit, the rest of the circuit must work in exactly the same way. I keep repeating these words. So it means that delta V, this delta V of 5 volts is here across our R equivalent and current if current I is taking from this battery, of course, exactly the same current is taking from this battery, I. And this current goes through our R equivalent. So we know potential difference across R equivalent. We know the current flowing through R equivalent. You have everything, you have uh, all information about, yeah, about potential difference and current, so you can find R equivalent easily using Ohm's law, right? So from uh, equivalent circuit, you can find this R equivalent. Okay, so let me uh, show something like this. From this uh, equivalent circuit, I can find the value of R equivalent. So I can write R equivalent equals to uh, delta V divided by uh, I. Right? And that's what I can use 
uh, over here. So you see, somehow else we've managed to find our equivalent without using this formula. But now, since uh, yeah, basically we know our equivalent, plug it here and solve it for R3. But I will use that expression, but of course you can plug numbers. 5 divided by 0.1, you will get 50 ohms. Right, so anyway, of course this can be solved for R3. So R3 will be equal to that delta V divided by I, so it's that, and then minus these two resistors, which uh, move to the other side of the equation, minus R1 minus R2, uh, which is exactly the same as this, right? So let me emphasize that uh, the same, right? So as a result, of course, the answer will be also the same, 25 ohms. And you know what, probably I will, over here, I will write this uh, in the brackets from uh, the equivalent circuit. So this we found from the equivalent circuit to make it clear. Okay, so uh, that's the second problem.